So, greetings everyone, hello, this is Agnafein, and uh, welcome to an interview with the one awesome, fantastic Mark Venturelli, the <laughs> head developer of Dungeonland, or should I say the main sponks spokesman of Dungeonland, should I say yeah, that? More, I'm not, yeah, I'm not much of a, a head developer around here, <laughs> but I mainly deal with the, the PR stuff, and usually I deal with the game design side of things, so yeah, I'm not the head developer by any means, but uh, I, usually, I usually talk uh, for the other guys, me and Gabriel. Yeah, and also deal with persistent people like me. That's quite uh, <laughs> an accomplishment and an achievement. <laughs> yes, very persistent people like you. <laughs> so, we're here in Dungeonland. The doors have opened for quite some time now. Are you satisfied so far with the shells of, uh, with the, shells of the game? Yes, uh, very much so. I mean, this is the first game we ever made, right? So it's been a super challenging, super exciting experience for us. Uh, we weren't prepared for all the good and bad things that come with releasing a game, right? So it was a very intense and, and exciting experience for us. But so far, we're really happy. There's a lot of people that love our game. Uh, the game sold super well in the first weeks. Uh, Oops. Looks like you lost connection with your server. No, no, I Did just... I accidentally clicked out. It's okay. I'm gonna <laughs> invite. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, you better invite me so I won't throw this myself off Steam. Yeah, you know, because I'm recording that, so it's gonna look weird. If you can no, it's invite. Better. Me. It's or better for you to. Yeah, it's better for you to invite me because uh, you're in Greece and I'm in Brazil. So if I would host, you would be experiencing some severe uh, latency, right? Yeah, but, uh, you know, that's one of the good things. So far I haven't seen people complaining about the latency, and that's quite a huge plus for your side. I remember when Magicka came out from Paradox, which had, you know, the same cope system, there was quite some issues. You th did you learn yeah, from that? You had some hints how to avoid... No. No, really. Uh, we, we, we actually had the same problems as the Magicka guys. But uh, the the Arrowhead guys, uh, they're they're super cool. They're they be, we've we've met uh, once or twice in Paradox events, and we talked, uh, and we had pretty much the same problems as they did. Because when you're a small guy doing a multiplayer game, you have a myriad of problems in your hands, right? So first of all, yeah, you you don't have money to buy dedicated servers, so that's the first challenge. So everything, ev every server in Dungeonland is someone has to host it in its own connection home, right? And so people have all different kinds of connections. They are all spread out all over the world. They have all different kinds of router router configurations. So this is one super challenging thing to do. And the second thing is that uh, not only people are not used to to not having dedicated servers, right? Since this is a, a super small Indeed. game, uh, but also because you get to <clears throat> you get you you don't have a lot of manpower and, and money to do. Uh, big beta, like open beta phases, or have thousands of players before Maybe release. Stress so, tests and everything. Yeah, exactly. It's super hard for us to have the structure to be able to do that before we go live. So we actually had uh, our first week, s so many issues pop out that we weren't aware of before. So we had to rush out. We did. We actually did four patches in the first week of Dungeonland to to fix like all the surprise sneak attacks that that happened. <laughs> Indeed. Flying ducks, dungeon maestro running wild himself. That's oh, the yes. only thing we didn't saw the first week. Dungeon maestro getting down the tower and start hunting players. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting DLC though. Oh yes. So, uh, so far I guess uh, the game will be supported through DLCs. Yes, so this is pretty much Paradox strategy, right? So that's what they usually do. Uh, you release a game for like super cheap, so uh, almost everyone will be able to buy it at some point. It's already super cheap now. Uh, if you're still not convinced, there's probably going to be promotions and discounts down the road. So eventually, if you if you have an interest in the game, you can play it, can have access to it, Steam and they. Exactly. So this is Paradox strategy. They want everyone to have access to the game, and they release DLC. So you're gonna see 
as is the case with most Paradox games, that we're going to release a lot of free DLC and paid DLC. Uh, and how much support we give to the game would depend on how much uh, community there is to it. So right now there's enough people there that playing Dungeon Land and, and loving the game that it justifies for us to do more stuff. So as long as there's still people playing and supporting Dungeon Land, we're going to keep uh, pumping new stuff out. That's great, actually. It it really needs for the players to take hands over the game and convince the developers that, you know, we trust you. Keep doing the good work. And uh, that uh, that's the problem that has been happening with the big titles now. I'm sure you're aware of Darksiders 2, right? If you remember, uh -huh. when, when the game got released, which was a huge title, they said first we will check thoroughly the game with the DLCs and then we will see if we will go in Darksiders 3. Mm -hmm. you know, which means that everyone now is all about DLCs. And that's what I wanted to <coughs> ask you. This is more like of a personal opinion that I have in the matter. Uh, do you think that it's good for the games to have the DLCs ready even before the game? I mean, pre-purchase a game and get a DLC. Well, it depends on your point of view. I mean, uh, if you look, there are several, else, several different ways to look at this. Uh, and most people, when, especially on AAA release and things like that, people uh, usually look at that from one possible perspective, which is uh, one possible perspective from a, a consumer point of view. But uh, there's also a lot more to these stories than normally gets uh, around. So what happens with DLC and pre-release DLC is most of the time uh, a publisher uh, won't ask you to do uh, to take away things from the game you plan to do DLC, right? So what normally happens is when you finish a game, when a, ga when a game is content complete, for instance, uh, Dungeon Land Breach Alpha, if I'm not wrong, around uh, October 2012, so between October and our release in, in late January, you had around three months, right? Mm -hmm. So during, during this period, we already finished the game. We were just uh, fixing bugs and polishing the game and adding that special touch here and there where, where we could. Uh, there were a lot more bugs than we expected. Uh, it was the first game, so we spent a lot of time on that. Uh, but during that time, what you want to uh, be what you want to be able to, to do as a studio is to have something that keeps your whole team busy, right? Because if you don't have your whole team busy, you don't get enough money to keep the whole studio running. So in our case, Retention Land is our only game. If we didn't have uh, the DLC, some DLC, for instance, the, the Grimoire pack that went for pre-order bonus, uh, that thing uh, would not keep our artists and uh, the sound guys and me busy uh, during the time our coders are doing QA, right? So, uh, but in the end, I think the customers, uh, value is a very tricky thing, right? So yeah. when you get a $10 game and you see that there's a DLC for $1 game, normally you think, I was fucking robbed of $1 <laughs> in my $10 game, right? Yeah, but that's not, a, that's not always the case, I mean... It's a, I, I see DLC as mostly a good thing. I mean, of course, you can use it for evil, but you can use yeah. anything for evil, right? Uh, but I see it as mostly as a good thing because you have more options as a, cons as a customer. So today we live in a, in a, in a time where you, where you can choose how much you can pay for a game, and that's, that's very powerful. Digital distribution gave us that. Before, the only thing that gave us that option was used games, right? And yep. that's not an option for PC. So today you can decide if, okay, I'm going to buy this game for pre-order. Oh, no, this game is not so exciting for me, so I'm going to buy this game on release day. Or, no, this game doesn't interest me very much, so I'm going to wait until it goes on discount. Or, fuck this game, I'm going to pick it up when it's like every cents or something like that. So to, today you have this option. This is very powerful for, for both the consumer and the developers. Because we as developers, we get to reach a lot of people, right? So if you don't give a shit about Dungeon Land, you're probably gonna pick it up for like a dollar somewhere yeah. down one, two years, right? Or in, so or in a, gonna, an indie bundle or something. Exactly, or a bundle or something like that. So eventually, more people are gonna have because that's all we want, right? Of course, we want to make money, but the main reason we want to make money is so we still around to make games. So making making games is our passion. We do this because we want to make games. If we wanted to make money, I assure you, there'd be. <laughs> A lot more viable options for us right now, <laughs> way easier than making games. So, what we want, what we want in the end, is more people to play our games, right? 
So that's pretty much about it. So in the end, DLC is just that. It gives us more power as developers to keep working, to, to not be so afraid and so risky that if a game doesn't make money in three months, we're broke down and things like that. It gives us time to, to do new stuff that we wouldn't have the chance to do and gets the customers the chance to not only uh, for us to do something that they want because after the game is released, for instance, uh, we had some DLC plan before we released the game, right? But after we released the game, we started hearing people asking, oh, we want more content for Dungeon Master, oh, we want more of this, we want more of that. So we actually changed our DLC plans to reflect what people were asking for. So this is something that we want to try to do more and more uh, in the next game, probably going to open the game way earlier than release, actually, because having hordes of people playing a game as fast as possible, it's amazing. It really changed our view of how to make games, I guess. Yeah, that's quite good, and especially the part that you can actually adjust the DLCs to what people want. It's really, really important because, you know, the person who gets the DLC that wants, then he will say, hey, they listened to me, they got that DLC first, let me support them by getting the other DLCs. Eventually, I mean, Dungeon Land is a game that can be expanded beyond any possibilities, that's what I think. I mean, it can expand way way more than just you know some uh, new dungeons it can go way above and from what i see is there any lady joining the ranks of our fellow compatriots here because i saw you guys on facebook you are recruiting female voice actress <laughs> <laughs> you're already spying on us a sneaky one so um, yeah we, we we can't confirm anything right now man but yeah we're looking we're looking for a female voice actor it's for dungeon land uh but that's pretty much what we can say right now not because it's a big secret yeah. but just because we 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 don't have the thing done yet so we don't want to promise people things so, yes, we're working on something that involves a female voice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the, the exact thing I got. I'm going to copy it from the Critical Studios Facebook page. Because well, maybe some Greek girls or other people who will watch this video yes, will apply it. Yes, well. we just, like, 10 minutes ago posted the, the, the opening. So, by all means, if you're female, if your voice is badass, if you're a super fun person, you want to be the next star in Dungeon Land, by all means, send, in, send your portfolio to jobs at criticalstudio.com.br. I want to be in Dungeon Land also. I need a deal here about myself. We should you, need, you need a softer voice, I guess, to play a female character, just no, a little bit. I'm not talking about a female character. You know, I'm a badass, <laughs> you know. I'm always a warrior. Every game I'm playing a warrior. I mean, this voice deserves to be in the game. I don't know. I'm going to make a single DLC and sell it myself. <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to have to have some serious pipes to compete with Greg Gleason, right? Did, yeah. you, did, you, did you see the, the latest video for Warrior that we released? It was on Rock, Paper, Shotgun, yep. if I'm not wrong. So that the man got the pipes. The man has got the pipes. <laughs> Indeed. So another question: You're actually the engine you are working can support Linux. So I had some people through Steam asking me, "Are you gonna make the uh, the game to support Linux also?" This is something that we're looking into right now. Uh, we can't promise it yet because, uh, as you know, we we work in Unity, right? Yeah. So Unity currently has support for Linux. The problem is. Uh, we started making Dungeon Land almost three years ago, so a lot of our code is old and is not compatible with the Unity 4, right? So we're looking into it, we can't promise anything, but Linux is something that uh, for we as Critical, we believe that is a market that has enormous potential for growth in the following years, so it's something that we're going to explore at some point. Indeed. Well, I actually see the game like a huge Dungeons and Dragons playground, as what I told you. I suppose this was one of your inspirations, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we... <coughs> the, yeah, of course, when, when we made Dungeon Land, uh, I think the main guideline we had was let's make something that it's super fun. We had a lot. Of, we have a lot of fun making this thing. One of the left or right a lot while we're making this so it was pretty much like this big cauldron where we mix up everything we thought was fun and cool about uh, things we each of us loved right so of course all of us are super nerds so we love Dungeons and Dragons so that's the first thing that went in there 
So we love beat em ups like uh, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs and Streets of Rage. Cadillacs and, and Dinosaurs. Where did yeah. you remember that, dude? <laughs> oh my god. We love this game. Uh, and Golden Axe and things like that. So oh, we wow. went in the mix. So the DR the guys, especially, they're super, super big fans of everything animation, right? Of course, mm -hmm. Disney and the Silly Symphonies and stuff like that, but also Hanna Barbera. And so, so all these things that we love, we, we kind of mashed it up in a big love letter better to fun you know like dungeon land like let's let's not take ourselves seriously let's make something that's super upbeat that's super fun and, and represents what we like uh, in games and art and stuff like that Indeed. so i was checking the passports what are those passports i haven't figured it out yet uh, everything that is on coming soon, it's uh, open slots for us to do DLC, both paid DLC and free DLC. So, Infinite Dungeon, which is the, the area that is coming soon, there if you look at the level selection screen, uh, that's going to be the first passport that you're going to be able to get at the store. You're going to be able to get a passport for Infinite Dungeon. Uh, and other feature areas that we do are going to be available in the passport section. So, uh, and bundles are going to be uh, more items and skills and, and stuff like that. And all all those sections are going to be both free and paid DLC. Nice. So, have you ever thought of a port for console? This is something that we also uh, are looking into, but we, as much as Linux. Actually, uh, a lot farther than Linux, but uh, uh, it, like I told you, we want as many people as possible to play a game, right? And our game is super console friendly because it's this local. It's, it was designed for local co-op, right? So this fits super well in consoles. Uh, but right now, uh, the console, the console market is changing. We just got PlayStation 4 announced. We don't have any idea of what Microsoft is doing, so uh, we don't know how the market is looking right now. But I'm sure that Paradox is considering it. Uh, but we have no idea if we're going to do it or not. Mm. It would be fun to see Dungeon land in PlayStation 4. That yeah, we'd love to see it. That would, that would be great. So, hmm, what is your favorite character in the game? Uh, that would be Warrior. Not Dungeon Master, Warrior? Yeah, Defender Warrior, yes. Because uh, it's probably the most underestimated character in the game. Uh, because people really don't know how to play. Most people don't know how to play the, the Warrior Defender. Uh, for me, uh, and I'm the designer of the game, so listen carefully. <laughs> I think it's the most overpowered character in the game right now is the Warrior. Uh, the Vanguard is ridiculously strong. The Defender is ridiculously powerful at crowd control. Uh, but the warrior is the trickiest character to play, in my opinion. So people, uh, and it's the most different from what you expect from other games. Indeed. So people come thinking about tanks and other games and stuff, stuff like that. In Dungeon Land, the warrior is very unique gameplay-wise. So if you look at the the recent video that we released for Warrior, we try to show a lot of different things that people can do that they normally wouldn't be able to do while playing the tank in other games, especially the wars being about position and crowd control. Uh, normally, when I, I like to play the war because I like to call the tactics when we play, uh, so I usually get to, to... I like the feeling of controlling the feudal battle, of like doing crowd control and putting all the monsters in one direction. So that's probably number one tip for survival in Dungeon Land. You never want to be flanked. So if you have all the monsters coming from one side, the That's heroes easier. will pretty much all down. Yeah, you pretty much kill everything. So when you play the warrior, it's your responsibility to make all the monsters come from one side only. So I love playing the warrior because of that feeling of power, the feeling of control. Indeed, warriors for life. That's why I'm receiving MMO <laughs> or everything. I'm just playing the tank. I mean, there's nothing else. I'm just tanking. I, I, I love that control of the fight that warrior can give. And... Uh, in the end now, it's like because we left someone outside, you know, the dungeon master, I think he's complaining with his minion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he probably is. So, really, would you prefer to play as a player or as a dungeon master? Because I've been burning myself as a dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I rather play the heroes because I think it's uh, it's more challenging, and because I'm very much a social kind of player, I really like to play as a team to to cooperate. Uh, 
and it's super fun to 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 screw the plans of the of the dungeon master. I think it's a super fun experience. <laughs> and I have another question: How many drinks do you actually guys drink in a beach? I know this is a weird question, but a friend <laughs> of mine she did like a hundred questions. Some of them I did them to you, so why not ask them? How many uh, drinks do you guys are drinking? In a beach, when you go out. In a beach? Uh, that would be precisely zero. Because uh, since Dungeon Land took three years of our life where we have gone to a beach. You're so yeah, <laughs> that's that's what it takes to make a video game right there. You're drinking gale in Dungeon Land, I suppose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now I'm going to put you in the corner. And because I have promised that to people, should we make a giveaway? What do you think? Should we give some happiness to the viewers? Should you make a giveaway? Absolutely. Uh, well, give the gift of Dungeon Land. Th th thank God, because you know, if I would have heard the no, that would be a huge problem. <laughs> I, I thought about that when you asked. Oh, no, I'm going to be an asshole and say no. <laughs> but, uh, I, I want people to play my game, so give that, give the shit away. I don't know who you are, but I will find you <laughs> and hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I'm leaving the number to you, though. So, how many do you think we should give them? I don't know. How many do you have? Well, I don't know. You are going to give, give them. all of it. <laughs> all of it. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> okay. Mark Venturelli. Everyone who likes this. Yeah. Say it. Say it. Please say it. No. You're the one that's going to send them, not me. <laughs> no. I don't even have keys with me right now, so I'm going to have to ask Paradise. I'll try it now. Yeah, of course. I mean, after the video, we're not yes. gonna do the giveaway like instantly. We're just announcing the giveaway. It's gonna take some time. Should we say like ten days or something? What do you think? Which I think. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check with Paradox for that. I need keys. If I had keys on me right now, I'll give them to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, just wait for us to finish the video and uh, ask them and tell you tomorrow. Okay, guys. Then you heard it yourself. There is gonna be a giveaway. <laughs> yeah. You know the conditions of the giveaway and every single video, I'm sure. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's more typical than Dungeon Land, you know. Yeah, there's also another another, another uh, special offer. If you buy the game, you get a key also. Mm, oh, this is interesting. This is quite a good promotion, though. I'm happy you said that. So, you heard that, guys. Now, if you purchase Dungeon Land in Steam, I suppose, right? Yes. It's available on Steam and uh, Impulse and Green Man Gaming and lots of other digital retailers. Yeah, that's quite good. I salute you, sir. I'm taking off my hat. Let's see? I took my hat off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, good sir. Uh, I can't take mine, but I can replace it. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so, guys, as you said, we're go we're having the giveaway. Just comment, like, and subscribe. The amount of the copies will be distributed from Mark when he gets them from Paradox. So don't worry, you will get your copies, that's for sure, or else we will hand down Mark. I suppose you don't have a problem with that, right? <laughs> we, we as long as, yeah, as long as you don't promise more keys than I'm going to give you. No, no, <laughs> I don't know how many of those we are. We don't know, we just said, we don't know. Everyone who will participate, <laughs> maybe everyone will get it. Maybe five, ten, a hundred, one thousand, who knows? <laughs> that would be nice. You're quite a generous person, so... And Paradox, of course. It's not like you're giving them yourself, as you said. So. <laughs> yes, it's a Paradox game, so it's their generosity, not mine. We love Paradox, <laughs> indeed. Love I, just make, I just make them, them look bad if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to convince them to send me a Magicka robe. I, I'm sure people from Paradox are going to watch this video, so please... You know my forum name, send me a Magical magic robe. I want to wear one for the Greek Halloween now that we have soon. So. No, you don't want to do that. I did that in Rio. It was, I was sweating so much after that. I don't care, dude. And it, and it, was, the, and it, was, the, it was the pink robe, right? Uh, Actually, the, the, the one they call the purple, right? Mm. <laughs> so it was the pink robe, and I was wearing a black shirt. So afterwards, I was completely covered in sweat, and it had like these pink... Uh, Pink, uh, uh, how do you say that? There's small balls of tissue all yeah, over my shirt. I got it. it wasn't pretty. <laughs> well, you were pretty in pink, so. Yeah, fuck you, Arrowhead. Fuck you and your robes. Beep. 
dude, that's my video. Calm down. <laughs> Don't go to say down before it ends. So, thank you very much, Mark. It was fun. Thank you. I hope we will meet each other. Of course, on your next game, I'm gonna stalk you for that also. But <laughs> oh, Jesus! I thought I was I was getting rid of you. No, 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 you're not. Now I've got you on Steam. <laughs> So, thank you for everything. I'm wishing the best of luck in Dungeonland and the DLCs and your company, of course. I hope you will grow as big as it gets. Thank you, man. Thank you a lot for your invitation. Uh, and, and seriously speaking now, uh, thank you a lot for supporting game, for, uh, for helping to get a word out about it. My pleasure, kind sir. So, good night, everyone. Well, it's night here, so... Okay, and um, we're gonna you're gonna see it soon, and hopefully enjoy. And don't forget to participate on the giveaway. Goodbye. <laughs>